Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Jupyter Notebook server and assess the notebook server through a web browser publicly. So here we have the assignment here and uh, create your own cloud computing server. I will start from the uh, place where we already created the instance on the cl uh, computing cloud. Now I'm going to log in to my instance. So here, this is my instance. Um, you see, now I'm using a username, CC. It's okay to use a CC, either CC or um, a root. Usually I use a root. Since uh, root gives me, um, so the first command I use sudo su root to switch to root user. Uh, and then I, this is not my home repository. This is a home, uh, directory of CC user, right? Now I need to go to my own home directory. So this is my home directory of the root user. I usually use root because root user uh, give me the highest priority, given all these instances are uh, temporary and uh, I need to hack a lot of stuff. So I, I, I usually use root. Uh, but if you are using this, uh, if you are using in the uh, uh, not experimental environment, but a, a, a kind of real environment. Uh, you better use a CC uh, as uh, safer to use CC since root is too wild. Okay, let's switch back to CC because most of you probably are using um, this uh, user. Make sure we are on the same page. Now we are using the CC user. So first thing first, we need to uh, download this Anaconda Python, where it is, which is here. Anaconda Python download, we need to download the uh, Linux version. So the Linux version is here, copy link address. Now I get this link. This is wget means I download this download this um, uh, URL, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, package. Now it's super fast. You see the speed is super fast. Okay, now I have it. I have this package here. Now I need to install this. Bash is the command I use to execute uh, the executables in Linux. Uh, I can use tab the auto completion function. So it helped me auto completion, auto complete this uh, file name. I don't have to uh, do this, uh, um, just input them one by one, right? Okay, now I just enter, enter, enter more, extend them. I strongly encourage you to read throughout all these uh, terms, but I will not um, for the showcase. Oh, okay, now we have, um, now we, we have the kind of a, a default directory, default place where we should install. It just accept the default. Prefix. Now it is uh, unpacking. It's just a wait for a few minutes. It is, uh, it is uh, installing. Okay, it will probably take a while. Uh, it's good to multitask, do something else, um, like uh, binge a Netflix movie. Okay, it's going. Okay, now we have everything in place. Do you wish to install or uh, to initialize Anaconda 3 by running code in it? Yes, I hope to use it. Now, okay, now we have it installed, but uh, um, we still not, uh, the, the, the Python is, the, the newest Python is still not loaded yet. We need to note it, load the newest Python we just installed. 
now this Python is which Python? Which Python? The Python is here, right? This is not the Python we just installed. Um, how we can get that? It's very easy. Just the USU. I think it stands for switch user. Uh, well, let's just uh, ignore it. Okay, let's ignore it. Let's do that again. SUDU, SU. That means I'm using sudo. That is um, a prefix for um, uh, admins, administrate, admin, admin uh, privilege. Um, okay, now I switch to admin. No, that's not what I need. That's just the exit. Exit and re login. Exit. Okay, I got you. I know where, where I was wrong. I just switched too many times. So the system um, does not recognize my, my, my command. Now I just exit. That's just the exit and re login. Re login to the machine. Now we have this. We have this is loaded. You see the base. Base is, uh, is the base environment. In Python, we can create different environment for different purposes. Base is a base environment. Mean that um, that this is basic, right? It's very straightforward. Okay, now what do we need to do? Uh, let's see if Jupyter Notebook is here. Jupyter by running Jupyter. Okay, it is here. It means that we can run something like uh, we run something about Jupyter Notebook. Okay, let's move back to um, the next step. Now we have uh, Anaconda Python install. Um, what's next? Running a Jupyter Notebook server. This is what we need to do, right? Um, okay, here. If you click this link, this link will direct you to um, uh, uh, to a documentation. Um, so this document you don't need to read throughout the entire page because there's so many information more than we need. I will just uh, select what we need right now. Uh, first one first, we need to generate a configuration file. You see the Jupyter notebook generate config, right? It's very straightforward. Just copy paste. Okay, now it tells me. Um, okay, my my configuration file is in this place. Right? Let's take a look at what it looks like. Nano, uh, which is a text editor and Linux. Um, again, uh, see what we have. Jupyter notebook here. Um, Jupyter, Jupyter notebook. UI. Okay, now we have a lot of configurations, but most of them, I think, all of them are annotated. Means they are not running. Um, let's go back to see what we need to do next. Um, so the assignment asked us to first, we need to set up a password, right? Because you don't want to expose everything to the public. It means everyone have the uh, IP address and they uh, direct they 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 um, um, put the IP address in their web browser. They can access all the information you are working on. That's definitely not something we hoped to happen. So we need to use a password to protect our interface. Secondly. Uh, we need to use SSL, which is um, HTTPS instead of HTTP. Um, so your that means your communication, the communication between uh, you and the server is encrypted. Is encrypted. Okay. Now let's see what we need to do next. Uh, we go back to the documentation. We have this here: automatic password setup. Um, uh, we just skip this. Let's just skip this. Okay, here we have this. Uh, this is the command we need to use. Jupyter notebook password. Paste Jupyter notebook password. Enter password. I will just use uh, a lowercase a b c as my password. I already uh, pressed a b c on my end. You see nothing because uh, this is the way how the Linux system protects. Uh, protect our password. It happening. Uh, believe it or not, it's happening on the computer side. I press enter, verify my password. I enter it again. A B C. Okay. Now this is uh, my my hashed password was saved to uh, this location. Let's take a look. Um, cat is the command I use to see what is inside. Um, yeah. Don't need to include all the stuff. To be the book and JSON. Okay, here this is my um, password here. Hashed password. This is definitely not ABC because it is hashed. You don't want to use plain text and let everyone know. Okay, what you are uh, what you are uh, using here, right? Um, okay, next step. Um, 
let's keep going. Let's uh, we now we have a password. I'm not sure if it is working. Sometimes um, uh, I set it about uh, I set it up and then I forget how to do that, right? Uh, so it happens. Um, I don't. I'm not sure if it is working. Let's keep going. So next is the same. Uh, let's assume we already have password. Let's go move to the next. Next is we need to create a SSL for encrypted communication here. So we can create a self-signed uh, 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 certificate. Um, this creates some issue. Let's we will we will see later. So this is a, this is a command we will use to create a certificate. Let's copy and paste. Huh? Does not exist. Um, we're going to start in the book to communicate via certificate option. It's a command. Okay, I got you. Sorry. I copy paste the wrong um, file. This one, this one, this one. This is what we need. Okay. Let me clear the page first. You see, it's very easy to go wrong because um, you don't have to memorize all this stuff, right? You just know, okay, I know how it works. Then it's, it's, it's good enough. Next time when you need to reset up, you just go to the documentation and then go through the entire process. Uh, because you don't have to do it every day, right? It's very, uh, it doesn't make too much sense to memorize all the steps unless you deal with this stuff every day. Open SS, SSL, uh, you don't need to know, uh, you don't need to understand all of the stuff, but just to uh, let you know that uh, uh, this key out, this is our key, this is our perm. Uh, honestly speaking, I don't know exactly what they're talking about, but uh, okay, I just follow. Uh, you can enter information here uh, according to your own user case, but I just uh, skip all of them. You can skip all of them. Okay, now I skip all of them. Um, okay, now I have some key. Uh, let's see what we have here. You see, I have the my cert perm, uh, my key key here. I want to move them to the uh, repository. You still remember we have this repository, Jupyter no Jupyter, right? I have everything under this Jupyter uh, repository. What I want to do is I move the my cert, uh, my cert. Okay, I can use. Uh, okay, let's use a um, less efficient way. There are more efficient ways to do that, but um, let's uh, keep it simple. My key. Okay, move this to file. Uh, move this file to Jupyter for this folder, and then move this file to Jupyter as well. Now let's see, it is not here anymore. It is under this directory. Now we have everything placed under this directory. Let's clear this page again. Okay, what's next? Okay, I need to tell the Jupyter notebook where my file is, right? So this is safe. Because the, the, this, uh, this perm and this key, is this certificate and this key is used to encrypt uh, your communication, the communication between you and the server, right? Now I need to tell Jupyter where the two files is, right? So remember where we put it in right now? Um, I think it's safer if we just use, uh, if we use the absolute, um, absolute location instead of um, a relative location. What's the absolute location? Home, uh, cc. Dot Jupiter. Yes, that's the absolute location here. And here, this file again is um, home, cc. Jupiter, my key. Okay. Now this. Um, this server is up and running. It is running on the local host on the port on the port eight 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 eight. And this is the default port. We can change everything here. So right now you cannot assess this um, um, this uh, this uh, Jupyter server through web browser because you can only assess through local host. Uh, you 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 can you can assess it through SH tunneling. Um, I just uh, typed it here for your reference. So SSH turn nulling. 
what it is about. Yes, let's just search it. We'll get it. So this is a keyword. You probably want to dig into it. Uh, SSH internally means um, you use SSH to encrypt your communication between you and the server directly. So um, um, but I will skip that. OK, let's skip that. Now you cannot assess this uh, directly, right? Um, what you can do is you can, um, you can uh, let's take a look. Let's see, we, we really cannot assess this. Okay, this is HT, this is, a, this is the IP address I'm using, 8888, right? Uh, remember HTTPS, if I don't use, if I don't input the HTTPS, let's take a look at what happened. So you see, actually, it is using HTTP instead of HTTPS. There's no reaction here. There's nothing happened here because it is not connecting. Um, even when we use HTTPS, there's nothing here. There's nothing here and nothing here. Um, usually, if you connect successful connect, there will be some information showing up here. But right now, there's nothing here. I mean, it's not connecting at all. What what happened? Because it's it's not a, it's not a, the um, Jupiter is not binding to the IP address. What we need to do? Okay, terminate the server. Yes, I want to terminate it. Move. Let's move next. Run a public. Okay, this is section is will be very helpful for us to assess the number book publicly. Um, now this uh, is the configuration file, right? Let's take a look at that, our configuration, how, uh, uh, what is look like our, uh, our configuration uh, file right now. Let's go to nano, um, Jupyter, uh, Jupyter notebook config, JSON, uh, JSON is the password, right? We just ignore them. Uh, PY is another configuration file. Okay. You can ignore them because these are the most important information we need to we, we need. Uh, let me paste it here first. This is the location of our certification file, right? You can directly copy paste. I will I will clarify this later, right? I will clarify this later. Okay, let's move on. Here is the terminal. Uh, this is the absolute pass to your, look at that, absolute pass to your certificate, search per PEIM. Okay, I copy it here, copy. Paste. Here, this is a key. Paste. Now, this is a line which will help us to uh, make the server publicly available. Set IP to star to bind all interfaces, uh, which is just the IPs for the public server. And this is a password. Do you still recall the hash password we just created? What's that? You definitely not be able to remember. It's just a long, right? Open browser means that if you whether this will automatically open the browser, really we use it force because we uh, force because this is uh, this is headless. Usually we call this machine headless because there, there's not there's no monitor and we don't need that at all, right? Because you need need one from your own computer, so we don't need that. We just make it force. Delete this. Let's save it for now. And go back and take a look at uh, what the uh, hashed password we have created just now. Password. Okay, this is a hashed password. We probably will have a little issue with this password because this password is, uh, you see, the encryption is uh, argon2. Um, that's a, uh, yeah, let's, let's see. We run into a problem with just Google. Nano. Here, okay, let's paste our password here. Mm. Okay, now we have the password here. Uh, the port is 9999. 
that's just the username. You still recall right uh, just now we were using 888. We can change the port number here. Let's leave it as it is. We'll come back to probably we'll come back to this point later. Now Jupyter Lab, you can run Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Lab is a more kind of a modern interface. I like it very much. Let's use Jupyter Lab and see what we are getting here. Hmm. I'm not sure if we can assess that. Let's try. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, it's not eight eight nine 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 nine. Okay, I don't think we are getting there, um, which is fine. They probably, we need to uh, debug a few places to see. Okay, IV has moved from notebook server to server app. This computer can be passed to server app. Be sure to update your configuration in the next release. Huh. You see, I get it wrong from time to time as well. So it's perfectly fine, perfectly fine. I'm not excusing myself. Just uh, how it is. Um, huh. Let's take a look at this. Let's uh, read this. Uh, um, read this uh, message here. Okay, let's go back to the documentation and see if we can get anything um, from there. All right, all right, all right. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is uh, probably this is a problem here. Let's, let me try this. If I'm correct, this change will happen magically. I do that intentionally. Okay, Jupyter Lab. Permission to onboard now, now, now. Permission to this onboard now. Okay, we have a problem. We have an issue here because we um, we are not allowed to uh, use us use uh, probably arguments. Um, Firewall, there is a firewall here. Firewall. Status for both. Let's take a look whether this firewall is running. If the firewall is running, we need to disable the firewall, right? We need to reroute it. Yeah, now you see why I like to use roots because um, it's just so annoying. Okay. okay. You see the default deny incoming, allow outgoing, this all incoming traffic. If it's not from um, this, uh, package this uh, um, interface, it is all denied. So we need to disable, let's disable. Let's see, search disable. Nope. Okay, we need to search another. Oh, yeah, open the wrong service. Disable. sudo ufw disable. UFW, disable. File was stopped and disable on system starting. Okay. Um, let's move back to, let's rerun the command again and see what we get. Ah, oh, look at that. Let's try a different one. Nano, 443, Okay, let's rerun this and see if we can get it. Ah, okay. 
And it's true, it goes through. So just to recall, I said, now we are using self-signed certificate, meaning that your connection is not private, it's just a warning, say, this certificate is not signed by a recognized third party. You just ignore it because you sign it by yourself so you know it is safe. Proceed. Password. Okay. What password I just created? ABC. Voila, we are here. Okay, now we are here. We have everything in place. Um, this is exactly what the file is look like, right? On my directory. So there is another trick that is um, you hope to run this um, uh, permanently, right? So if I close this, if I close this interface, this will not be able to um, keep running. You see, let me try that. Let's try that, right? Okay, let's try that. Okay, now I just close this. It is still running here, right? Let's just close this window. Okay, say goodbye. It is not there, right? So we need to make sure that even we close our terminal, these, uh, this uh, Jupyter, Jupyter server is still running, right? How we can do that? We do that by using another command called nohub. Okay, where is my session? Okay, now I log in again. Uh, you still recall we just have a Jupyter Lab here, right? Um, I just want to show you something, right? Okay, I just, I just want to show you something. You see, uh, there are a lot of information here. And uh, if you refresh here, it's what tells you information here, right? It tells you which IP is accessing this, um, uh, this, this server. Um, so this is one way we can do that. We can read this message. These messages are very important. Sometimes you want to check this message to make sure that your notebook is not assessing, is not assessed by other uh, unauthorized users. Like you see some random IPs you don't recognize. Right? Um, okay, let's disconnect this. Okay, now we have this here. If you refresh it, it will do nothing again, right? So we hope it can keep running. So the command we are going to use is called no hub, no hub. And then we run that, we just add no hub in front of the command we just, we just, uh, we just executed here, no hub, and add another symbol here. Let's press, um, yeah, okay. Now it has a no hub dot out, meaning that all the results um, are written into this file. We can take, we can check out what's already there. So it literally everything you just uh, uh, saw in um, in the previous page, right? Um, but uh, uh, it's a file, so it log everything here. It log everything. Um, now let's try to close. You see what well, we are. Uh, should be in server here is running already. Now we can refresh it, refresh it. Now we can close this window. We can safely close it and uh, and see if it's still running. Ah, it is still there, right? So you can um, assess this here anywhere. Let's try to close the entire web browser and open it again. Okay, let's see if it's still there. Yes, it's still there. You see, I didn't input my password, right? Because I already um, input it again. So the system recognized. I really remember uh, my password through the cookie. Um, uh, so I don't need to input every time. Um, but be assured that it is it is there. The password is there. Let's use a uh, privacy mode and see if we what we can get. You see, I, if I use a totally new identity, uh, it will suggest me to. Uh, enter the password. So everything behind this, like this information, it is protected by this power password. So uh, remember to create a strong password. How you create a strong password? You just use a strong password creator. 
strong password generator here. This is random strong password you can create. You can select how many. Uh, you, these are the options you can choose. Uh, generate, generate, generate. Just remember, you should be able to remember that. Right? This is very important. Um, you can use a password manager to achieve that goal. Um, uh, something very cool about this is uh, you can run terminal within this page. So you don't need to open that uh, SSH anymore, right? So here I have this terminal. It's a fully functional terminal. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, play with it. Now you have everything, you have this Jupyter notebook up and running. Um, hope you enjoy it and hope you uh, can complete this as soon as possible and get this, uh, get your assignment submitted. Um, let's see if we cover everything. Ah, save an image. Okay, save an image of your instance. I think I show you in this. Uh, I show you in this in class, but I can do that again here. This is a command you use to do the image. You see, now I don't need to open that again. I I just create something here. My image name. I can just use <clears throat> my name and timestamp. <clears throat> and I press enter, it will create an image. For time's sake, I will skip this. Once you create, create a, a, the, the, the image, next time you can uh, launch uh, the instance directly from the image. And all the information here, like uh, this file, readme file, this open answer file, the no hub file, everything will be there. Okay, enjoy. <clears throat>